Okay, so where we left off, we had just built this nice little piano instrument. Which sounds pretty cool. Um, something I might want to just do, you know, there's a very unnatural like decay and release going on here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of release on the volume envelope. So if I were to just kind of really quickly tap a note, I get a somewhat kind of natural piano damping ring. You know, a real piano doesn't just cut off that immediately. So I think about a, almost about a second or so. Sounds kind of natural and nice. And now what I've done is um, before we use these four clips, now I've got a couple different clips, which are essentially the same. Uh, piano just slightly different samples and I've built another instrument rack with it and I did the same thing we did before with selecting the proper root key and arranging the key range of the different samples and we can hear that this one sounds a little bit different that's the second one and that's the first one a little more noise in the first one and the second one has a slightly different sound so we get some variety there. Now, something I want to do here, um, again, what I did, I did, I raised the release as well. But on the sample tab, what I'm going to do here is hit the reverse button. And when I hit reverse now, these samples will all play back in reverse. And we can see our little uh, orange line moving around here. I've also set the sustain mode to loop back and forth. So that means when this sample gets all the way over here, it's just going to start playing forward now. And that gives us this kind of cool, uh, you know, kind of psychedelic sound of a uh, sample going back and forth, which is pretty fun. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two. So what we can do here is we can select our sampler here. I'm going to right click and select group or you can use the shortcut command or control G and now we've got ourselves an instrument rack and we, that gives us macro knobs and it also gives us different chains now we can stack layers of instruments here and that's exactly what we're going to do I'm going to grab this particular piano the forward one and I'm going to bring it over here and just drop it on, on a chain down here now I'm just going to put this we'll call this first piano and we'll call this one second piano. And I might put in parentheses reverse just so I remember. And hit enter. And maybe I'll just bring the first one up by dragging it so it's in order. And now what happens is when we play our chord, the first piano will play the notes forward, and the second piano will simultaneously play them backwards. So what I'm going to do with our first piano is I'm just going to select all of these samples that are in here, shift clicking them, and I'm going to put the sustain mode on forward and backward just like we do on the other sample, on the other piano. So now what happens here is our sample plays forward and then it will start going backwards once it reaches the end here, which is pretty cool and that's why you're hearing this sort of reversal thing going on. Um, so now we've got like these two different pianos that are playing in different directions and when we play them together there's some kind of cool stuff happening as far as like one verse sample one playing forward. Now we might want to just mix these to a nice comfortable volume and have control over that so what I'm going to do here is on the chain volume I'm going to map to macro one the first chain and I'm going to map to macro two the second chain right now they're both off so let's just rename these this is going to be first piano and this will be second rev piano and now i can play i'm not going to hear anything so i got to turn up the first piano we can put that to taste and then we can work in our reversed piano maybe i want that louder even we get some interesting things happening with our samples. Of course, we could just have our reverse piano. And now we get these really cool swelling piano notes. So, 
that's by creating an instrument rack. And in the next video, we're going to go into putting some effects and filtering delays onto these two sounds to really take it to the next level. Stay tuned.